Okay, guys, we're going to quickly design a lawnmower chuck. Uh, for the purpose of this video, it is intended for those that knows what it is, the how it's used, and just simply want to design it correctly in a CAD program. Without further ado, I do have two other videos, a part one and part two, on more in-depth, a slower um, tutorial so that it shows you exactly what we're doing. For the purpose of this one, again, it's going to be semi-fast. If you need the, the other one, the more in-depth one, um, check our channel there. There's a link below. If your lathe is 10 inch, then as mine was, you need to establish your outer working perimeter. I did so by dropping a 10 inch circle. I can't go past that. Likewise, on the inner, depending on what faceplate you're using, chuck or whatnot, determine what is the uh, smallest diameter you're allowed to go so that you don't get in trouble. Mine was a 3 inch faceplate. So I know that I can't go past this or outer ring, or else I do damage to my lathe. I don't want my actual jaws and my clamp to move that far, so I'm going to drop in a half inch clearance on both perimeters, and this will allow me to uh, safely operate my chuck without damaging, again, my lathe. It does you no good to establish a 10 inch perimeter if you allow your the jaws of the chuck to move out or in either way. Now, depending on the size of the or the number of slots you want in your uh, chuck, you can do this however way you want to. I'm using six jaws, so I'm going to go with six points of reference. And this will allow me to put in some arcs that will uh, appropriately work in, in my design. Now you could simply draw an arc, but guys, I tried that. It does not work very well. Uh, it's impossible to get a nice fluid action. This method does work. Whatever method you choose, uh, I, it won't hurt my feelings. I'm going from the outer section all the way across center to the outer side of the small ring. That's six and a half inches. So that tells me if I draw a circle centered here, that it will be 13 inches in diameter. And this will allow me to uh, make, make a nice, good, fluid arc. So if I drop this in, I can see that this arc here is the one that I'm going to be using. I'm going to do a quick trim now. I'm going to trim off the extra that I don't need. We're using Bobcat. I also use... Uh, I'm sorry, we're using Kanban for this. I, I use Bobcat, AutoCAD, and a few others. So whatever program you're using, it will still work quite the same. I'm just doing a, a trim quickly. I didn't do a quick trim so I can show you exactly which pieces you need to take out. The outer ring and one of the two here. I like leaving the top just because it's easier to see for me. I want to duplicate this several times around the point, but before I do, I want to make the slot the correct opening. I'm going to do so by making an open offset. My slot needs to be a quarter inch, so I'm going slightly over on both sides. This makes a nice even slot. I remove the line reference. If you're using a quarter inch bit and your slot's going to be quarter inch, then by all means, just make the slot. Uh, nothing more you have to do there. I'm going to take this. I'm going to create a polar array from dead center. I want five more copies of that space 60 degrees apart. This is going to be two plates, so I'm going to get rid of the unnecessary pieces that I don't need at this point, which is simply the inner and outer perimeter. I'm going to leave the overall diameter and the faceplate diameter for this point. I'm going to drop in a center post dead center. That will tie the two plates together. I'm going to be using a 5 16 inch boat, so that's what I end up with. Depending on the um, faceplate you're using and how, how it ties in, you may have to drop in some mount holes. 
you would do that you know however you see fit again uh, polar ray works nice it makes it uh, very even so that you know that your specs are sort are dead on and still center if your faceplate has four holes then you make three more copies six holes 60 degrees whatever the case may be that drops in some mount holes for my faceplate to attach to it um, i see an option that most people go with is finger holes on the outer rim this uh, allows you to tighten the chuck down and uh, doing so is quite helpful I'm going to make again six copies of that at 60 degrees so that would be my finger holes very important guys that if you're making your face plates I said this in the other videos uh, on the one plate have them out one plate have them slightly off center so that your fingers do not get caught um, in the mess all right guys so we're just about done here uh, as far as the cutting of the actual chuck you would only cut the center post, the grooves, and the outer perimeter and the finger holes on both plates. On one of the plates, you're going to mount the lathe plate or the face plate mount holes. And then it would have the offset finger holes as well. Guys, that's pretty much it. If you need a more in-depth one, uh, feel free to check the link below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. We're going to have a lot more great videos coming up with simple tutorials, some more complex, some projects. And as always, um, I'm going to try to include the DXF file. If you don't have time to design it, uh, the DXF file is below. Have a great day.